Welcome to this outdoor practice in nature. You may find it helpful to listen on hands-free so that you can also hear the sounds of nature all around. Find a place close to a tree if possible or a large rock big enough to place your hands on at shoulder height and lay your blanket out close to the tree if you're using one. Take your shoes off and if it's not too cold you can take your socks off too otherwise later on. And then when you're ready lay down or you can start in any position you feel right. And when you're settled, observe what you are aware of. Observe where your attention is. Whatever you experience. Are you more aware of the outside? What's happening around you? Or of your inner landscape? Or both? Or maybe shifting between the two? How permeable do you feel to the outside? Notice whether it's possible to be aware of both inside and outside at the same time rather than focusing on only one. in a very easy way, without a great deal of effort or willing. And then let that go and observe where your attention is. Sometimes lying down can shift our experience of this relating. So try these questions at different levels, different perspectives. Lying on your back or belly, sitting, standing, whatever positions you can explore. Which level best facilitates a sense of both inside and outside for you in this moment? Or do you have a sense at which level you need to be right now, which seems the best fit for the state of your nervous system? Or maybe you have a few options. What sense do you have of this place? How do you experience your response to where you are? And how much do you sense an ongoing responsiveness to this place in each moment? And what else is present? Nature can provide us with a dynamic counterpart, a relationship with something that is related to us and also more than us, a context within which to experience both ourselves and the other.
and then we'll continue with a few inquiries that might help support this relating, experiencing the reciprocal agency that exists between ourselves and nature, and the way we receive information about both the inside and outside world. Although in perceptual terms there can sometimes be a less dualistic black and white distinction. So beginning at the skin, bringing sensation, waking up this sense of our boundary, whatever feels good, stroking, rubbing, scratching, just a light touch to feel all the skin of your body. Explore all the skin around your body, noticing how it may feel different in different places. Feel to this envelope of your body that is one, even though it may feel very different all over. Feel how your skin is being touched and how you are touching. And then touch deeper in the flesh, squeezing, pressing, kneading, what ever feels good to wake up your flesh. In phenomenology they talk of the flesh of the world, meaning that the way we relate with the world shapes our actual flesh. This idea even goes back to Aristotle and likely beyond to many indigenous peoples. Touching and receiving that touch. And then even deeper to the bones. Touch your bones where you can. See if it's possible too to feel your bones being touched. All these layers together with the nervous system form a part of the way our relating is mediated, part of the way we are impressed and express ourselves, being in that exchange. There are many other elements too in this question, like our visceral experience. There are also many fluids circulating that support as well the nervous system. Information carried in a very different way to the nervous system, underlying and supporting ease and a more plural perspective. So we'll explore sensing some of this fluid mind through movement in relation with ground and space, this place. And you can experience too how this may feel to your nervous system. Not so much whether it's good or bad, but how it's different. Starting by jiggling, shaking different limbs that may be easier in standing, wiggle, shake loose the flesh from the bones. Also to sense a distinction between these elements, separate but connected. Feeling where the muscles are more gripping the bones and just shaking loose in that jiggling, wiggling, contacting the fluid element of the bones as well, so they may feel more rubbery, shaking loose, even arrhythmically sometimes. And if you like, you can try, if you have a bottle of water, to help get this feeling, pick it up and use the jiggling of your whole body to shake the water. Stay with that feeling of the water moving in the bottle and since your body is mostly water try to also feel it inside and as you feel that see if you can find support too to let go by feeling how the head can still relate to the horizon all around how there is space above you how this relation can extend to the feeling of the ground touching your feet how this can create a context within which that process of jiggling and meeting what comes up occurs. You could even shift to imagine now that it's the ground that is trembling, shaking you as gently as you need. And 
and when that's enough, allow it to slowly subside. So you can pause at any point the video and just take a little bit longer or repeat some sections or stop and come back. It's a long exploration in whole. So take your time in your own timing with that. The way we use all the senses, including the quality of the gaze, the way we see, can make a profound difference to the way we experience reciprocal relating. So we'll explore very simple shifts in how we can see the world, how we experience that exchange. Firstly, by noticing whether your vision is more focal or peripheral, or both, or shifting. Could you just observe that without changing something? Spend some time in that inquiry. And then see if you can get a sense of whether your eyes are more reaching out or touching. Or rather, receiving the light of whatever you see being touched. See if you can play with those two choices to recover any diminished capacity as well. Sometimes we only need to remember there are other perspectives and to exercise them. To help open up the peripheral vision, one sense of where or the visual space. Make a big, slow circle with the arms to trace your visual field. So the eyes remain forward and you trace the edge of your peripheral field of vision where you can just see your hands opening up to the horizon at your sides, above, the space below. It may sometimes also help to make some movement with the hands as peripheral vision is attuned to movement quality as well. And although more primitive in its origins than focal vision and going to older parts of the brain, it's nonetheless very sophisticated. Could you let the light, the visual space, come to you? Are you willing to be touched by the light, the colors, whatever is in your visual space? Easy, without a lot of effort, if possible, simply accepting to receive. And when you like, just rest your arms when that feels more clear. You can even explore a little, a more integrated vision, which is both focal and peripheral at the same time. So to do that, just observe something, focusing a little more exclusively, and then see if as well you can see the broad horizon behind it extending. Try that a few times, shifting from focal to not exclude the peripheral, observing any change also in any part of your experience. It's a very useful exploration in relating to see how that shift to not lose the broad horizon behind the person you are relating with changes the quality of contact. And you can notice particularly when your gaze becomes more exclusively focal as well. We can even sense, too, this shift in others. And if you want now, you can take some time to walk around and see if it's possible to simply observe the quality of your gaze without changing it. A very useful practice. You can observe, too, throughout the rest of this exploration when your gaze is more one or both, when it shifts, there is no good or bad, right or wrong gaze, but it can tell us a great deal about the quality of relating, where we are, where our presence is. And when you're ready to call again upon the fluids for support and ease in relating, in feeling your boundary and the exchange between inside and out. Start by stroking very lightly, 
from the fingertips of one hand back towards the middle of your body, the center. Short, very light strokes, not pressing much deeper than the fluid just beneath the skin. Work your way very slowly up the arm with a listening touch, feeling where that fluid flows back easily or where it may feel more sluggish. Not forcing. The listening touch is therapeutic, inviting the possibility to receive again. And especially across the shoulder, how does it flow back here? Am I able to receive easily, generously? Listening, listening. The same with the other arm. Observe any difference. We have an intelligent, selectively permeable boundary on many levels. Could you be curious to listen how it may flow differently in each place? This will support our receiving not only the impressions of the other, but ourselves too, establishing a sense of boundary from a different perspective. What about here? How does it flow? What about your gaze? That more peripheral attitude, non-exclusive. If you go back to more exclusive focusing, just observe it and see again if in an easy way you could not exclude. Just simply be aware of whatever is there. And eventually the same with the legs. Maybe easier in sitting. Start at the tips of your toes. Very light, short strokes. Listening. This is also a listening exercise. And this can be very soothing for the nervous system, like the way animals lick themselves and feel safe. An easy, effortless, non-exclusive attention, like a meditation on non-doing. And in that exchange, there can even then be a peaceful ground. Notice, too, how this fluid feeling flowing back across the groins, is it easy there? Is there an easy fluid connection? Same with the other leg. What about here? As you listen inside, can you stay connected to the outside? And then eventually, when you've completed that, taking your time, same thing, but going deeper in the flesh, starting at the hand again, like you're putting on a long glove that you have to reach into as you gently move the deeper fluid up your arm. Reach out into the space beyond your fingertips. Still listening. Can you sense the possibility for both directions at the same time, one supporting the other, the possibility to reach into the space and to allow something to come back, that listening reach, same with the other arm. Eventually the legs starting from the tips of your toes. Can you sense both directions and still not lose that peripheral attitude? What does your body tell you about the way you are reaching? Here we have a lot of feedback. And when you've completed that you can slowly start to squeeze both hands, like you're gently squeezing a sponge, squeezing the fluid out. And then open your hands and feel how the fluid flows back into the tissue, and particularly tuning in to the speed of that flow. Try it a few times. So you start to go at the speed of the fluid, less forcing it. 
You can even include the feet, the legs, the arms in this feeling of something peripheral flowing back. And after a while, just pause for some moments to taste the aftermath, to maybe feel, too, that when we don't hold the body in a fixed tone, when the tone can shift responsively, how there's the possibility for more fluid to circulate, basic to our nourishment on many levels, to the movement of information, to processing. And then lay on your back, with the knees bent and the feet on the ground, if that's okay, to enlist the help of gravity in that circulation. Feel the nature of the ground under your back, under your feet, rather than having to really do anything with your body, just that impression in each moment of the ground that is touching your back. And without losing that impression of the outside, just observing how your body responds or not, without having to do anything about that. Another way is just to feel where there is a sense of weight. And you may find in those places you have also a sense of the many qualities of that ground that is touching. Where you don't sense the weight, just be curious to receive the impressions. So without having to try and relax, your body can instead respond to the impressions that you are receiving or not. That yielding happens as a natural response. It's part of the language of bonding we first experience after birth. Our body knows what supports contact. It can also be a kind of reality checking reference. So check to see if the ground is there, to feel it in each moment. If you're holding your body away from the ground or collapsed, not really sensing its shape, the volume. Simply be curious about how the impressions of ground you experience in each moment are. If it feels warm or cold, is that ground wet or dry? Does it have a humidity? Does it have a texture? What about its density? Is it hard or soft? Maybe that's variable. Does it have a contour or is it flat? Whatever you notice, there's also much more there too. So give time for your body to receive and respond to these impressions without having to do that response. After some time, notice particularly what you feel of the ground touching your shoulder blades. And stay present in that contact as you let the arms come up into the air. So you can also use a little more the weight of your arms to feel more the ground touching your shoulder blades. It's like a relational movement to support that giving of weight you can feel as if the arms could be supported by the space, maybe imaginary strings that you can hang from, hang even more weight, or someone there. Could you imagine someone there in the space holding your hands and then feel more the ground, or simply where the hands are projecting up into the space? In that process, feel how there is a flow back up your arms through the shoulders. If that feels restricted in any way, check again if the ground is there in this moment and the space too. So you're not only focusing inside, you're listening inside to how you're responding also to the outside, to where you are. 
until you feel a more unimpeded flow coming back, receiving generously in a way that helps establish you too. Like the way we welcome with open arms an old friend, all of the volume flowing back like a nourishing waterfall. So eventually there's almost no effort in that reach. Your body is responding to the impressions of ground and space, both very clear and present. And when you like, rest your arms and try the same with one or both legs first, feeling the ground under the back of your pelvis. Is it there? Could you stay present there and then let the legs come up and use the weight of your legs to feel more the ground. If there's effort holding the legs, check if the space is there. Let the legs too be suspended by strings. Some body or the sky like a magnet inviting, welcoming the space beyond your feet where the feet are going. And we're playing here with also allowing the motor of your imagination to work to create a fresh, new, other in perceptual terms, it's just as real. And then seeing how is your body impressed or not in each moment? When are you more doing that relationship? Is there something flowing back through the hips? If there's any restriction or effort, check again whether you are present in the contact, receiving the impressions of ground and space in each moment. This can be a process that may take a lot of coming back to. So keep coming back to this exploration to become familiar and to recover the capacity of responsiveness in each moment, to differentiate, to not only identify with what may be held, it's a kind of embodied attachment we get messages from the body and we might often need to check if the context has not diminished. Again, like a reality checking. Stay as you, long as you like with that and then just rest again. Noticing once more your permeability. Meeting what is with support can be healing. Our presence is usually the best guide in this process. What we're ready to meet comes up. There's a context, a spacious holding. And in many of these explorations, we're exploring a relational presence. For this next inquiry, when you're ready, place your hands together. You can do this in sitting if you prefer. or in lying with that sense of backing. Explore the difference, if you like. Find a full contact with the hands, the palms, the fingers, and observe too how you make that contact. If one hand is more dominant, Maybe you experience more a touching, being touched, or both, or less clear distinction between those. So we'll play with both those options, this double touch, the possibility to exchange in two ways. First by touching with one hand and receiving the impression with the other. Not really having to do anything with your hands, merely a shift of intention. Spend a while there and then shift the roles again and again, slowly. Take time to explore both choices. Observing particularly whether one comes easier with less hesitation. Is it possible to not lose that easy peripheral attitude at the same time. To be aware of both what you experience in your hands and the ground with spaciousness all around. 
easy, without a lot of effort. And then you may find what's happening in the hands can be felt even more clearly. In fact, in some cultures they shake hands throughout a conversation when meeting. And it adds another perspective, another layer to the contact. And eventually let go of that intention, but stay with the contact and feel the quality again. Has something shifted or not? How are you making that contact? Whether, for example, it's more with the arms and shoulders, or simply in the presence between the hands. And then we'll shift to experience the same with the feet. So if you're still wearing your socks, you can take them off. And you can try this in sitting, or if it's easier, in lying. Place the soles of your feet together to experience that same process. First of all, noticing how you make that full contact. Whether one is more dominant. Is there a distinction between whether it's more a touching or being touched, or both? and then slowly play with the shifting roles. Observing if you go back into that habit of exclusive focus, just let it go in an easy way, not excluding. Observing within this bigger context, something more than me, there's the nature all around. Observing both capacities, both choices in the way you meet the world. See, if you're willing to forget for a moment what you know of this other, and rather be curious in each moment about what the impression feels like. So either capacity can grow. For many of us, there is a habit of perception like through predominantly wearing shoes and walking on hard artificial surfaces. So we can regain these capacities and they can sustain if we change our environment enough and the habitual way we relate. And eventually let go of the intention again and observe any shift in the quality of contact. Easy. The exchange simply happens, we're just present, or not. And then rest on your back once more, changing levels often here to get a different perspective, to see how that changes the way we relate. As babies, we spend a great deal of time getting used to one level, finding the support there before we're ready to move, to meet the world at a new level. And we can go back when we need to. We're very familiar then with the experience at each level. It's good then to be able to sense at what level you need to be, what's appropriate for you, or the capacity to relate in each moment. What supports that? What level makes the most sense to the needs of your nervous system at a certain time? So feel free to shift as you need to pause and to rest too. In itself, that's a useful inquiry, to listen to whatever you need, moment by moment. And you can explore finding the position that best invites you to bond with gravity now, so that you don't have to even do the yielding, simply receive the impression of ground, so that yield happens, touching and being touched how all of that spaciousness around supports, how in this moment the world could welcome you as you welcome the world. Are you willing to receive with all your senses, like the sound space, receiving? What do you sense of the sound space all around? How do you respond inside to that? Do 
you have a sense of the smell space that touches deep inside. Or the tactile space as you feel the air, whether it's more humid or dry, the breeze, the clothing touching your skin. How do you respond? And if your eyes are closed, allow them to open, receiving easily, soft peripheral gaze, simply allowing the light, the visual space to come to you without having to reach out. How do you respond? If you go back to that habit more of reaching, only focusing, just observe it and see if it's possible to let it go and to receive and to listen. The quality of gaze can also affect our experience of gravity. So pause as long as you like in this direct experience, in this exchange. You can even notice your jaw. Is it touched by tension or gravity? See if that question is possible without changing something. The jaw is yet another perspective to experience where we are, moment by moment. And again, where do you sense the weight of your body already yielding to receive the ground? When not, you could be curious to receive all the impressions of the ground in that place. That dynamic other helps us find presence and agency in a reciprocal relating. We are met by a dynamic other in balance. So whatever you experience in your body, check to see if your attention has become more exclusive or if you still feel there's an ongoing relatedness, a responsiveness happening. Curious too then about what is more than you. As babies again we build much of the sense of our bodies through relating with this other. Is there both an inside and outside, not only one or the other, both at the same time? Not that it should always be that way, we're just exploring that option and after some time you can just let it go and see where you are where you need to be in that moment. So again, spend as long as you like with this and when you're ready, extend the legs out one at a time if they're not and bring them close together and extend the arms also overhead. We're going to explore some fluid contact between inside and out. In a sense, returning to the origins of life on our planet in the ocean a memory of which can still be inherent in our bodies. We'll play first of all with a lateral movement, that's a side bending of your whole body into a C curve, or then its opposite. So, as primitive as possible, that means one whole body movement rather than separate parts. So try to bend your whole body, spine, arms and legs into a C curve, and then the other way, slowly in your own rhythm your whole body moving together in one movement. Stay quite flat as you move in the plane of the ground and listen how that feels. What do you experience? Do you feel one movement or separate parts? It can tell you something about the integration too. But sometimes too about the way you're moving. So then pause and shift from this exclusive inside reference of moving your body to become aware of the space outside, particularly the space on both sides of you. The contact the sides of your body make with the space on each side. And imagine that it's filled with water, that you could push away from you with the side of your body so same movement, but try that instead. Stay with that outside reference and push the water away on one side and then the other. So you're on the surface 
on that point of contact between inside and outside. How does this feel different, this more relational movement? Or another possibility to try is that the water on one side pushes you, like there's a current, some water flowing, and it pushes then the other side, creating the similar movement. Your body responding to that impression, or do you feel you're still more doing it? How is it different? Again, the movement has a relational meaning that the body understands. This language of movement is very old. And instead of struggling with only the body, we're also present on the surface at the meeting between inside and out. And just pause when you like, and rest the arms down, fold them across your chest, and bend the legs one at a time to return the feet flat on the ground. And then we'll explore a more evolved sequential movement with a fish body. So picture your fish body for a moment, disappearing the arms and legs. So you see that shape, the head, the spine, the ribs, and even the tail. Visualize how that tail could extend beyond your pelvis, like that of a fish. Notice too, once more, your sides, particularly sensitive in fish. What can you perceive of the surrounding space and what's in it through the sides of your body? Can you sense how much space there is on each side? How open do your sides feel? Sometimes that permeability can help us feel our boundary, especially when it's an ongoing intelligence, present and responsive. Fish can feel subtle changes in the current and the pressure at their sides. So now that you're surrounded by water, start to wag your fish tail from side to side. So as you wag your fish tail, can you see how the tail is pushing the water side to side? Stay with that contact. Could you see how this creates a current in the water that actually starts to drive you forwards? There is a meaning to this relational movement that your body understands to drive you through the water. So don't struggle with the body on its own. Push the water with your tail. You can play with actually that water becoming thicker or thinner or just being water. What helps you get that feeling easier? The movement simply happening. Not too slow, though you can explore changing the speed to see what changes, what's easier. And if you only push the water with your tail, how much does this movement travel up your spine? Could you stay with the inside and not lose the outside to allow the movement to flow through you? And after some time, just pause again and let the head do the same, wagging from side to side, pushing through the water. If it helps, imagining your mouth is at the top of your head like a fish doesn't have to be a big movement for the head to drive through the water, to sculpt the water. And as you experience this head swimming, could you allow that movement to sequence through your body without doing it, just observing how far it travels? And then instead, find this side-to-side -side movement from the middle of your body, the ribs at the sides, pushing again the water, allowing that relational movement to also travel up and down as much as possible. And after some time, your whole fish body together more as one sequential movement, 
and to come back to the relationality, feel how you push a wave of water down the sides of your body that is moving you through. Could you feel the water sliding down your sides? Imagine yourself swimming in this way in an ocean or in a river with a light coming through the water. Or you could explore driving a little more from your tail or from the head, slowing down or speeding up the movement, not lose the outside. Or if it's useful, imagine that you're chasing something, maybe something tasty to eat or being chased. And explore this for as long as you like and when you need to just rest and observe your experience particularly any sense of what is moving inside. And we'll continue to explore how our fluid nature supports our relating, how we can also resonate with what's around us, returning again to where we have spent much of our evolution in a fluid environment. For this, you'll need a position you can move in. You may find that easier in standing, or you can begin sitting or lying and slowly transition to stand and allow more movement. Once more, imagine the space around you as fluid filled, now as if you are resting on the ocean floor, and yet you can breathe easily, water all around. With that water all around you, deep in the ocean, could you begin to sense any of those deep ocean currents around you, that slow streaming, the gentle streaming of fluid flowing around your whole body? Feel that current of water touching your skin. Even deeper, let your body slowly begin to be moved and sway in this fluid-filled medium, keeping an awareness of the water outside of you. Feel that water sliding over your skin. The feeling of this outside water is a little fresh. Find this feeling all over the different parts of your skin to feel too the shape of the surrounding space meeting your skin boundary, the tactile space. Allow your body to find whatever position, whatever level makes it easier to follow the movements that emerge as you begin to sense yourself in this watery environment, moving and being moved, impression and expression, fluid exchange moved by those deep currents and tides of the ocean, suspended and carried, supported by the water all around. Again, you can explore bigger or smaller movements, whatever feels fluid. And as you move, checking, are you aware of the contact of the outside water all over your body, all your skin touched? Feel how this external water dimension shapes your movement and your body. And you can play too with modulating what happens if the water becomes thicker to give some more resistance to work with, or thinner to provide less resistance, what changes, what works. The other is always in process, never fixed. Even a rock is changing over time. After some time, make a shift to the inside. Imagine the water inside you. You are mostly water. And as you're moving to stay in touch with this inner space, full of fluid but warmer, this fluid warmth inside helps you to move easily, to find a good feeling inside. 
Could you let this inner water move you? Noticing what sensations arise as you experience the water inside of your skin boundary. If you don't sense that, just visualize it. Allowing your body to pour in any direction freely, easily. There's no right or wrong way to move. It's simply a process of exploration, inquiry, meeting what is and inviting what may be possible. As a process, step by step. Again, you can explore thicker or thinner fluid. What shifts, what changes. Or just listen to feel where that fluid feels thicker or thinner. And eventually allow your awareness to move between outside water and inside water. To stay for a while, to slowly shift then between the two. Experiencing first one and then the other. How is that different or similar? What changes? And then sense both the water inside and outside. Is it possible not to exclude one? How you may be nourished by this exchange. How your skin is a meeting of outside and inside, touched by both. You're like an invisible go-between. It's there, but it disappears because it doesn't get in the way. It's simply facilitating, mediating. Feel the freshness of the outside ocean and the warmth of the internal water. As you start having an experience of continuity, the water all over your body shapes your skin and the skin brings you together, consolidates you, gives you a sense of boundary, a good feeling of being one. And after some time, when you're ready to gradually come out of the water, take your time with that transition. And let's say you're on a beach then, a beach full of sand, and you can decide if you'd like to take a sand bath, a warm sand bath. You might feel it helps to change position, even to lie down. And explore moving through this contact Build your skin from this touch. Enjoy this warm sand. Whatever movement feels good, our bodies usually know what we need. We just have to listen. A sense of coming together. Referring always to the outside, this warm sand to build the body. When you like, slowly come to rest. And we're going to gradually come up to sitting or standing. But take your time to shift levels, to shift perspective without losing that contact, without making a big shift in your experience. You can allow the eyes to stay closed if you like. And in your mind's eye, see the horizon all around you. Could you see somewhere on that horizon the sun begins to rise? And as it rises, how it slowly touches your skin and begins to warm your body. 
could your body welcome the sun's warmth as the sun welcomes your body? Feel the pores of your skin absorbing its warmth so they can breathe a little easier. Allowing this feeling of softening to spread all over your body. Fluidity and warmth. Visualize your heart as a flower bud ready to open. And as the warmth of the sun reaches your heart space, see the flower petals slowly unfolding, blooming and blossoming in this life-affirming light of the sun. And now there's a gentle wind coming, but because of your skin, you feel protected. The wind is not making you cold. You can enjoy its touch because your skin, like a nice coat all around you, protects you. Protects you also from being overstimulated from the outside. Could you feel how your skin gives you the feeling of containment, oneness, Sensing your skin boundary. Feel how your clothing touches your skin. The air or breeze. The quality of that air and its humidity. The ground. The sensation of ground and space around you. Pause for as long as you like in this experience of both inside and outside, in this exchange. Homeostasis can be experienced as a peaceful ground. Your relationship between inside and outside simply happens. There's nothing to do. And when you're ready, you can lay down again, yet this time placing your feet on the tree with the knees bent around 90 degrees or a little more. Some people like to first ask permission from the tree. And if you're not sure how to do that and want to try, simply ask the tree whether it's okay. And just be open then to whatever way you may receive a response. In the same way that we have to listen differently to the heart, the gut, the mind, and all the other perspectives our bodies offer us. So find a good distance, not too far, not too close, so you can rest a little the weight. And as before, what can support the relationship, receiving the impression of what is touching you, is curiosity. Could you forget for a moment all you know about trees? And just feel what impressions you receive from the skin. from the flesh, or even deeper through the bones and more, of this other. That could be what you feel at the surface of the contact, the bark of the tree, or if you don't have a tree, the rock. But it could go way deeper to the core of the tree. It's fluidity. Or if it's a smaller tree and it's windy right now, you may feel that movement. Or even be able to sense its roots, its branches, the leaves, to the organism that is the forest. All of the connections above and below ground. Where do you experience that outside, inside? How? Are you willing to be open, curious, to receive in whatever way the impressions of the nature all around touch you? To observe where you are in this context. In a sense, always a fundamental ongoing question. Experiencing too the reciprocal agency, the dynamic potency that is always there where we are never alone. 
and eventually to experience how you can build your body from this other, just as we do as babies, first in yield, as we bond with the support we receive from the other, from gravity, to build our bodies more as we start to push from the support of the clarity of this relating, a kind of two-way feedback, we feel both more ourselves and the other. So then, a very gentle push through the feet or the legs, more a giving of the weight. It feels like a condensing of yield, so you don't lose that outside, the beginning of a gentle push to feel more the tree and so that as well you can feel more yourself and let it go. Explore that a few times, very gently, more a meditation, a listening to both the other and how that intensifying of contact is also building you, your legs, the bones, into your spine, even maybe as far as the head. You may then feel how your head travels a few millimeters into the space. So each time you find that gentle push, feel both the impression of the tree, the direction your head is moving into the space beyond. And then to as much as possible, stay with that outside as you feel how this flows through your body, illuminating it, building your body from those outside impressions. It's this way from the start, yielding to the impression of the tree and space, finding yourself through the dynamic presence of the nature around you. A balance, a homeostasis of reciprocal agency. Notice if you do too much, too much willing, creating tension or just a lot of sensation. It can be a challenge as we're creating in this push a little more sen sensation in the body and it can be easy then to lose the outside. So observe if that happens. That yeah, may simply be directing you outside, back when there to is ask a the question, mutual where dance. So we can make sense or when you may take over and stop listening. Could you stay curious with both feet, with your whole body about the impressions you receive from the outside, where you feel you're responding to those or where you're doing too much. And after you've explored that for as long as you like, just rest and take your time to slowly come to, ex to stand, to experience something very similar through the hands, which in evolutionary terms are evolved feet. They still have many of the similar functions in their relational capacity. So then you can place your hands around shoulder height, if the tree's big enough, about shoulder wide, or on the rock, if you don't have a tree. Find the contact. So take some time in the same way to receive the impressions. Curious. Once you've established some of that contact, let the hands stay there, stay with the tree, and step the feet back a little more, lengthening out your upper body so you end up with the pelvis above your feet. And once you find that position, don't move the hands and feet, but come back to stand. So now you can use a little more weight to receive the impressions, to feel the contact. Through your hands, receiving. Through the arms, maybe even to the spine and even further to your feet and ground. And once you've established that connection, once you're present there in the contact, receiving the touch of the tree, stay and at the same time feel your tail starts to lengthen back into the space behind you. The tail starts to move back, almost like there's a string pulling it, or you just observe where it goes. Can you stay with the tree? Give the feet to feel the ground, actually building your body from the tree, the space behind, and the ground under your feet. And when you feel the tail stops going back, return to standing, 
pause and repeat that journey a few times as you meet the tree in standing is it possible to not lose the broad horizon behind this other that may help you to receive more the other when it's not only is there something responding in your body moment by moment and when does that stop when are you in flux with the other and when does it become something more fixed? When is there more just you doing? After some time you can explore that contact through different parts of your body. You can start at the skin or go deeper the flesh, the bones, the fluid, the viscera, whatever level, and even without separation, your body as a whole, or through an arm, the side of your body, your head, any part of your body, modulating the contact, so that you can find a way to receive the impressions of the other, in balance with listening to your own response, inspired, impressed, expressed the ground and space all around. When are you responding to the other and when does the doing take over? Did you lose the outside? And after some time when you've explored that as long as you like, just pause again and observe your permeability. When you're ready, you can begin to walk around even. There's many things to just notice, like when is your awareness more inside, outside, or both, or shifting? When are you more touching, touched, or both? Whether your gaze is more focal, peripheral, both, or shifting, is it possible simply to observe? Another thing you can notice is the way you see are you seeing things, objects? If so, could it be possible to allow everything to be a process? No nouns, everything as a verb, everything as a process. To trust that we will know we have an intelligent membrane on so many levels, with so many perspectives. It's present, emerging, in relationship. And when you've spent enough time in those questions, maybe you can explore how it would be to speak from this place. This can tell you a great deal about the meaning of this experience. So if you can find the opportunity, speak from this place to find out. Or observe as you go back to everyday life, that transition, what happens, 